Hey, Todd Usher here coming to you from upstate South Carolina talking about closed crawl spaces in the South. From beautiful Seneca, South Carolina, next to Lake Kiwi, how to build a foundation right. So in this foundation, our crew was here today to do part of step two, I would say, in, in sealing or closing our crawl space. Step one is waterproofing the outside of the crawl space, installing a foundation drain, and then spraying that waterproofing membrane on top of the wall and down eight inches on the inside of the wall. This serves as our capillary break. And what a capillary break does is it stops the capillary flow of water moving up through porous masonry or concrete and into our building, into the wood, into the crawl space. A good analogy for capillary action is how a tree or plant drinks water, pulls in water from the ground and those small capillaries draw water up to the very top of the tree. Masonry can wick water up many stories. So this capillary break is critical. And we've chosen over our years of, of practice and learning, we've chosen to install the capillary break at the top of the wall and to install it on the interior. You might wonder, why don't we run this foam board and vapor barrier up to the top of the wall? And that is pretty simple in our part of the country. The short answer for that is termites. We're in a high termite infestation area, and this four inch gap provides our termite inspector the ability to see if termites are tunneling up from the ground into the wood of the structure. So this four inch gap here is what we call our termite inspection gap. And it's a very critical component in a termite prone area. What you see behind me is a crawl space that has had a moisture barrier installed up the wall and an insulation board installed on top of that moisture barrier. This is what we call closed crawl space rough end, what I call really step two, which simply means we're doing this work before we frame the floor system on the house because it's a lot easier to do before the floor is framed on the house. But I wanna just show you this membrane. This isn't just any ordinary membrane. It's actually a woven membrane and it's laminated. And for the life of me, there is no way that I could possibly tear this membrane. It is super tough. Some folks have tried and practiced closed crawl spaces with just a simple six mil thick polyethylene film. We believe that this membrane is very important for keeping the crawl space intact and the crawl space system intact. So you can imagine if someone's crawling around on this floor, as tough as it is, there's no way they're gonna poke a knee through this or even a sharp object's gonna have a hard time puncturing this membrane. The membrane's gonna stay intact for a very long time. As you can see, the membrane is installed first and runs up behind this foam board and a couple of really interesting steps. So membrane goes up first, it's then anchored to the wall so that it won't come loose. And then the foam board is anchored to the wall. And the foam board is anchored with a special anchor that actually is made for foam board. So this foam board is actually an inch and a half thick and has an R value of about 10. We're only required to have an R5 in our climate zone, climate zone three. And then these special anchors anchor that foam board to the masonry wall with what's called a powder actuated fastener. That anchor holds the foam board to the wall over the top of the membrane. And then one of the key next steps is that our crews take just a simple metallic tape because the top of this foam that's now exposed after we've put it on the wall is porous. And we're gonna get some rain between now and the time that the house is dried in. So we wanna seal the top of this foam. So number one, it doesn't pick up water from rain. And number two, that it's just a sealed, non-porous surface. So they take this foil tape and they apply it to the top of the foam board. There's a small joint left where the foam board and tape meets the 
masonry wall, and that's sealed with a very aggressive polyurethane sealant. That sealant moisture cures and makes a complete watertight connection to the top of the wall here. The steps that take place here um, result in an insulated crawl space foundation wall that has a capillary break. The top is watertight and sealed to the wall. It's also airtight. Every fastener that's fastened in this wall to hold the foam on there is then further sealed with a metallic tape. So we have comparable material, metallic film with metallic film. And this gives us a robust closed crawl space wall system. Another component of our condition crawl is we have structural foundation piers under the house that support dropped beams, structural beams that our engineered floor system sits on. We've looked at the wall system. I just want to show you the pier system and how we handle the rough end of the closed crawl. So same principle, we've installed a capillary break on top of the pier so no moisture will wick up from below the ground through the masonry. And then we've installed that vapor barrier, that membrane all the way around the perimeter of this pier. We've fastened it with mechanical fasteners to the masonry, and then we've taped the joint. This hasn't been done yet, but there'll be a bead of sealant applied all the way around the top for a complete air and moisture seal. And then at the bottom, these tails are left so that when the final closed crawl space vapor barrier is installed, that it can be tied into the bottom of each pier. Another thing I want to point out is, as I mentioned, I'm standing on bare soil and the earth actually has lots of moisture in it. Some folks don't really believe that the ground holds much moisture. Granted, it's rained here, but we've had this plastic down since well before the rain and it's bone dry dirt underneath or so one would think. You would think that dirt is dry but it's really just packed full of moisture, which is evident by the condensation on the underside of the plastic film that we've put down. Lots of moisture comes up from the ground. So if we were to just seal up this crawl space, frame our floor on top, not worry about moisture coming up from the ground, most likely we would end up having a mold bloom happen on the wood framing underneath the house. So it's very important we do two things. First, is we install a sacrificial vapor barrier. So what you see right here, very dirty and muddy because the crew's been walking all over it, but this is a six mil polyethylene. This vapor barrier will, will be continuous, will be put down to simply keep the ground moisture from coming up and keeping this crawl space extremely humid during construction. We wanna stop the ground moisture flow with that sacrificial barrier and then we're also going to ventilate the crawl space during construction. And you might say, well, Todd, that doesn't make sense because you told me earlier that a vented crawl space is not a good idea. And that's true if we have cold surfaces in that crawl space. But during construction, we're not going to be conditioning this space. So venting it with outdoor air is going to keep moisture levels at bay so we don't have mold grow underneath the house. As you can see here, looking through this entire crawl space, they've got about a half a day in of a two day job of doing the rough end of our condition crawl. You can see the sacrificial six mil poly, the vapor barrier that's kind of temporary to keep ground moisture from coming up. We've got a little more to install on a third of this crawl space. And you can see on some of the walls, the crew has completed the insulation install and the vapor barrier up the walls. And then on other parts of the wall, they have only installed the vapor barrier. 